from Macomb Fieldhouse on the campus of Edinburgh State College in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. The 1972 National YMCA Swimming and Diving Championships. Hello everyone, Paul Brown again from Edinburgh State College and continuation of coverage of the National YMCA Swimming and Diving Championship. During this program that you're about to view, we will see the finals in the women's competition. Where possible, we will inject the consolation and we say and underline where possible because of all the meets we have to cover. Mr. Buster Crabb, who has been helping us in the commentary in color, is at this stage in the competition of all places speaking at a YMCA swimming banquet in New Jersey. So we have uh, in the stead a gentleman who has been very active in the whole formulation of this entire event here at Edinburgh State College for the full two weekends. In fact, he was working on it, I would venture to say, and we're going to check with him on that in just a moment, for a period of about, I would say, maybe nine months, but we'll check with him momentarily. He is Mr. Bill Daisley, the physical director of the Erie YMCA and of course the Erie YMCA is the host Y and Bill Daisley is the coordinator for this big event. Bill are you lasting it out? Do you think you'll make it? I hope so Paul. It's been some kind of a uh, two weeks here and we really love it. We're really excited about it Paul. I thought that the audio outbursts during last week's men's competition was up in the DB high areas but uh, I anticipate from what I've heard so far that we're going to hear some real out giving a voice during these events with the gals. We sure will, Paul. 600 girls are here and they're excitable, they're lovable, and they're very good swimmers. And probably, Paul, you probably know uh, about 150,000 girls across the country have participated. They're finally getting down to the last 18 champions of the country. And we're real excited, they're excited. I'm glad you pointed this out, Bill, because I don't think uh, up to this stage in the coverage of the competition that we pointed out that. This just didn't occur as we're viewing it, that these people have competed at their local Ys to get here. Well, this is right. They had to participate in their local Ys in dual competition and then also have represented their YMCA in what we call district, regional, or state uh, championships or an area championship only to get here. And on top of that, must have met a qualifying time. So uh, these girls are YMCA girls who have really been seasoned in competition. They're tops. Bill, what's the potential as far as these gals or in last week's competition, uh, the boys continuing on? Well, they can go on right on. There's trials coming up in Chicago, and if they have the qualifying times uh, and they meet them here, why well, some of these kids are, we're going to see in the Olympics. Well, I see that we're going to get set now, and I think we should go to our closed nets and get set for the first event, Bill. All right, thanks, Paul. Bill, as I've uh, wandered about the campus of Edinburgh College, and particularly in the area of the natatorium, I've noticed that all sorts of means of transport have been used by these individual families to get here. Well, you know, Paul, a lot of them uh, come as far away as Florida, and they have to fly in to get into Erie. There are a lot of them that come by uh, commercial bus, cars, some have come by rail. <laughs> I had one boy who took a bus, came in here, and had to hike from the college pool to Erie and back, and this show's dedication, and I must say that uh, 
to travel 1,500 miles to be here for a championship to really give you a dedication, Paul. I even detected uh, on the huge parking lots here at Edinburgh, uh, some of the people who came here by the regular family camper means, these campers. Yes, uh, it's sort of comical. Uh, in one way, uh, the uh, father and mother came up to me and asked me if they could park. I said, yes. I put them in a no parking zone. They're coming every way. They even have a tent. I would think, too, that uh, the young people, uh, though at this occasion we're covering the women's competition, that the gals and the guys had to save up uh, quite a bit of money to cover the expenses of the trip. Well, you know, uh, most of the local YMCA's will probably have swimathons, raise money, uh, spaghetti dinners, all kinds of little uh, items to uh, raise money. It usually takes one year of planning to go to a national. And probably have mentioned, but next year the YMCA Boys and Girls Nationals are going to be held in Fort Lauderdale. And again, right from this time on, these kids will be raising money to get ready to go for a national one year away. I stated earlier that you had spent uh, about the previous nine months preparing. Uh, would that be accurate, or maybe it went back further for you? Well, we started our bid five years ago to uh, host a national championship. It takes this amount of time to train officials and that, but the last nine months have been on planning, securing uh, uh, the type of people that we want to run a championship, uh, advertising, uh, you know, this type of thing to get people knowledgeable where it's being held at. Sure. Have your attention, please. Event number one, women's 500-yard freestyle championship final. Well, I might like to mention before they start the next event, not only did the swimmers travel an awful large distance, but we have brought in an awful lot of uh, championship committees from around the United States to give us a, a good representation of our country on our championship committee. The championship finals for the 500-yard freestyle in lane one, Laurie Adsit, Shades Valley Y, Birmingham, Alabama, from Homewood High School, she's 16 years old and a sophomore. In lane two, Sherry Bush, South Reverend Y at Melbourne, Florida. She's a junior uh, collection. She's a 14-year-old ninth grader in junior high. In lane three, Diane Jaglowski of Mount Clare Y in New Jersey. She's a 17-year-old 12th grader at La Cordaire High School. In lane four, Ann Black, Decatur DeKalb Y, Decatur, Georgia, Columbia High School, eighth grader. She's 14. And in lane five, Phyllis Beck of the York, York, Pennsylvania. William Penn Senior High School, 17-year-old, 11th grader. And rounding out in lane six, it's Janice Anderson, Montclair, Y, Montclair, New Jersey, Mary Washington College freshman, she's 18 years old. We're off and running, uh, Bill, for the championship final 500-yard freestyle. You know, Paul, it's uh, really uh, noteworthy in lane two is Sherry Bush from uh, Florida, Southern Brethren, Florida, age 14, but she is the current national champion in that event. Uh, last year she won it. She ran it, uh, won it in 522.7, and that would be the far lane on our viewing screen in lane two. So it's uh, something to look forward to, a national champion, but she's seated fourth in this. Now for the uh, non-swimmer, we're to take the uh, description literally. 500-yard freestyle, it's up to the individual to s swim whatever style he or she wishes, right? Uh, yes, Paul. It, when they say freestyle, what they're talking about is usually the Australian crawl or the overhand stroke. And uh, this is a tough one because the kids have to gauge themselves so that they don't tire out for the last 100 yards. Uh, looking on the screen, uh, lane three is uh, out in front almost by a quarter of a uh, length of the pool. But she may be, uh, her pace is a little fast right now. And this is a tiring stroke. It's really getting, uh, getting to be a sprint more than a distance anymore. Lane two and four are kind of close, and uh, one for that matter. Yes, it's gonna. Uh, you'll find in the last hundred yards that they'll be up a little closer uh, to uh, Diane. Uh, by the way, the ages are ind indicative of what's happening to swimming today. The ages range between 14 and 17, and here they are for a national championship. I'm sure if Mr. Crab is here. Buster would enjoy this because he is 61 and he swims just as fast as these youngsters anymore. Buster will be returning to us, of course. 
Lane three and Diane Jaglowski, Montclair Y still in the lead. Montclair YMCA is a noted powerhouse in the girls, and uh, uh, if you take a look at her stroke, the, the coaching is excellent. She's reaching out. Her kick is not way out of the water, but I still think that we're going to have to keep our eyes on lanes two and four. And I think that in the end, they're going to be very, very close. It's amazing. It's uncanny how close they have been right through so far, Bill. Yes. That's it's Sherry Bush in lane two and Ann Black in lane four. You know, Sherry, uh, sure, they arrived yesterday from Florida, and she's been campaigning pretty heavily this uh, early spring. She's been around in a couple of the national events. I look for her to uh, uh, pull out near the end, but it could be, you know, that long travel, 1,500 miles. Paul uh, does take a lot out of a swimmer, and she's been working early this morning. She was in the pool at 8 o'clock this morning working out. Now Sherry is eking just a wee bit ahead of Van Black. She's picking up her pace now. After a grueling event like this, wouldn't these people be very tempted to eat up a house load? <laughs> no. <laughs> Normally the swimmers are so uh, excited and uh, for the anticipation of the event. When they're afterward, they're uh, tired. You'll see them on the award stand. They're excitable. But normally, they come right back and cheer their teammates on. They'll, they'll wait an hour. Their stomachs don't get set right away. And you wouldn't want them to eat right away. But uh, <laughs> some of our swimmers will, as soon as they get done swimming, or look for the nearest sandwich bar, Paul. <laughs> the kids are funny. So the anxiety of it all would do away with some of the appetite, I presume. It sure does. does and it? Uh, uh, they've probably eaten around 3 o'clock and have rested for a couple hours and came into the pool for a warm up. And by the way, take a look. Uh, I think you see Sherry starting to pick up her pace even closer. We're now talking about a body length. She's setting a fast pace. I, I think you're going to see uh, a uh, new champion at this rate. Two lengths to go, Paul. Here it comes. Look at Sherry Bush. Lane two. It's going to be down to the finish, Paul. It's going to be close. Wonderful, wonderful finish. And I think we got a new national champion, though. It looks like the uh, number one spot goes to Diane Jaglowski in lane three. The unofficial time, of course, is 521, which would better the uh, time of Sherry Bush from last year. It's unofficial. You saw probably one of the finest 500s. Uh, the last 50 yards, these girls put out a tremendous kick and a tremendous finish. There's, there's the official. In lane three, coming in number one, Diane Jaglowski. Her time, 521.73. Is that right, Bill? That's right. And lane two was second. And lane two was Sherry Bush. Her time was uh, 521.996. And lane four captured place number three. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And that would have been Ann Black of Decatur to Cal by Decatur, Georgia. By the way, the uh, winner. In lane three, Diane Jaglowski, Montclair Y, Montclair, New Jersey. The uh, 12th grader, she's 17 years old. Oh, you know, that last event, that 500-yard free, Sherry Bush, Bush took second place. She was the record holder. Diane Jaglowski, who beat her, set the new national record. It's uh, in a time of 521.783. Tremendous, beat the last year's national champion. Next on the dock at the 200-yard individual medley, in lane, three, in lane one, Carol Lee Gerke. McCutcheon, Edison Y, McCutcheon, New Jersey. A 15-year-old 10th grader at St. Mary's High School. Cheryl Prince in lane two. She of the Georgia Y, Indianapolis. 
16-year-old 10th grader at Northside High, Jenny Ogle at Arbor Y, Ann Arbor, Michigan in lane three. She from Pioneer High School, 16-year-old 10th grader. Mary Ellen Scollins of Glen Cove Islanders, Glen Cove, New York. West Hempstead, West Hempstead High School, 16-year-old 11th grader. She in lane four. In lane five, we have Diane Soden of Montclair Y, Montclair, New Jersey, a Bloomfield High School student, 16 years of age, and a 10th grader. And lane six, we have Sydney Swayman, Grand Rapids Central Y, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Ottawa Hills High School, an 18-year-old 11th grader. And uh, Bill, you made a comment as we prepared for this one that the uh, qualifying times are really close and it should be a hundinger. Well, we should enjoy this 200 IM. And one thing we have to be looking out for is that these swimmers are going to be swimming two lengths of each of the strokes, butter, back, breast, and any stroke not previously swum. And the times range from two seconds to two and a half seconds between number one and six. Boy, can you imagine what race that's going to be? And they're really biting at the pool because we had a false start already, Bill, huh? Yes, uh, in lane six, she, uh, she went forward too far and her heels let loose, uh, what we call raising the heels too far. It'd be very anxious, they're very tight. I would liken that to slow pitch when you uh, are biting at the bit to leave that base bag <laughs> and uh, the ball hasn't been hit yet. Huh? <laughs> this is true. It's quiet for the start, you'll see it become deathly quiet. Good start, we all hit the water together, Paul. It looks good. To forecast the winner, Paul, is gonna be impossible uh, with the time difference here. Lane two with a slight edge, Bill? Slight edge, and then came our girl with the false start in lane six. It'll all tell in the breaststroke, Paul. Uh, the two hard strokes in the IM is breaststroke and butterfly. If you have two strong ones there, you have a chance to get out in front. The lane two definitely has a clear-cut lead. I want to remind you that the time you see on your screen is unofficial. We're going to have to get there before 1-5. Uh, uh, lane two made it to have a chance at the record. And our record, national record at this time, is 2-16-5. Look at lane uh, four and three. That's Jenny Ogle in lane three. In two, Cheryl Price. She'll have a chance at it. She's gonna be there before 150. Isn't that beautiful, Paul? Look at that nice stroke in lane four. It's gonna be close. Remember, the record's 216, 216. It's not gonna be a record, but look at it. Lane four. Lane four, and in lane four, we have Mary Ellen Scullins, Glen Cove Islanders, Glen Cove, New York, Y, of West Hempstead, New York, the 16-year-old 11th grader at West Hempstead High School. Mr. Stalker. Okay, Bill, there's the uh, final standings. It was uh, lane three coming in. Whoops, check me. Lane four. Lane four, I'm sorry. Lane four, and that was, of course, Mary Ellen Scollins. Uh, she was in first with 219.312. Uh, lane three was second, and that would be Jenny Ogle of Ann Arbor, Y, Ann Arbor, Michigan. 
And coming in third was lane five, and that was Diane Soton of Montclair Y, Montclair, New Jersey. You know, Paul, uh, these girls in the finals always exceed their preliminary times. It's really something to see these girls work out all morning, work out in the afternoon to get ready for the finals to come back and do a better job than what they had in the preliminaries. Just fantastic. The 50-yard freestyle championship final. Swimming in lane one, Lee Ann Doler, Northwest Suburban Y, De Plains, Illinois. And she a 14-year-old ninth grader at Maine North High School. Debbie Rins swimming in lane two from Montclair Y, New Jersey. Columbus High School, 16-year-old 12th grader. In lane three, Debbie Broughton, Wakefield Y, Wakefield, Massachusetts. A Peabody High School student, 17 years old, 11th grade. Jody Yambor, Birmingham Y, Birmingham, Michigan, in lane four. She attends Our Lady of Mercy High, 16 years old, in 10th grade. Laurie Potter, Sewickley Y, Sewickley PA, in lane five, a North Allegheny High student, 14 years old, and a ninth grader. And Meg Roberts of BR Ryle Y, Glen Ellen, Illinois, Franklin Junior High student, seventh grade, 13 years of age, in lane six. Paul, this won't be something of beauty. It's going to be something of pure strength and arm turnover. And watch how quiet it gets. Beautiful start. Beautiful. Any one of these girls can break the record of 25 flat. The national record is held right now by Liz Favi of uh, Huntington, New York at 25. Keep your eye on it. It's going to be close. Looked like lane three, Bill. Well, it was close. Lane three uh, had a beautiful finish kick, and uh, unofficially the time would be in the 25s, not a record. That's Debbie Broughton, Wakefield Y in Massachusetts, the Peabody High School student, 11th grade, 17-year-older. And then, you know, there was a girl in grade nine, ninth grade in the national finals. Can you imagine that? Lane one. I wouldn't venture to say the rest, but here they come right now, Bill. Yeah. And how do they read? It was lane three with a time of 25, 188. 188. 25, 188. The, uh, the Debbie Broughton in lane three came in as the top swimmer in this category. Coming in second was Jody Yambor of Birmingham Y, Birmingham, Michigan. Her time 25, 445. And coming in third in lane two, Debbie Rents, Montclair Y, Montclair, New Jersey. The one meter diving finals. And uh, Bill, diving is a real thing of beauty. And uh, to me, being a non-swimmer, a non-diver, a layman in essence, it would seem to me that there's a lot of ballet involved. You know, Paul, this is true. These kids don't just go on a board and dive. They put hours and hours in uh, a gymnastics class, tumbling, uh, trampoline work, uh, floor exercise before they even get to a diving board. And then a diver doesn't practice uh, once a day or, or uh, for 15 minutes. Sometimes it's two hours at a time, just perfecting one little hop. So you're right, it looks like ballet, and that's how they award them. This is Lois Byman from Bethlehem Y, Bethlehem, PA. Oh, she just missed it, Paul. Just a little too far in. Four and one half. Four and one half. Four and one half. Four and one half. Five and one half. From New Canaan. Carrie Irish from New Canaan, Y, New Canaan, Connecticut. 15-year-old 10th grader. She's doing a forward two and one half somersault in a tuck position. Now this is a 2.3 degree of difficulty, and it's very difficult. Watch. Oh, and that one is beautiful, Paul. Well, that's beautiful. There's about a five and a half. Five and one half, six, five and one half, five and one half, four and one half. Paul, she executed that just beautifully. Uh, she just missed going in straight in, and that's where the points come in. She just didn't get quite around. This is Doris Koenig, West Essex, Y, Livingston, New Jersey, 13-year-old eighth grader, 
at Ridsdall Junior High School. Can you imagine that? An eighth grader? Beautiful. Six and one half. Five and one half. That was a forward dive with a full twist and a layout position. Degree difficulty was 2.0. And as you know, Paul, that was beautiful for a 13-year-old. This candy probably feels like a king. <laughs> That's what it is in German. This is Peggy Anderson from Dubuque, Y, Dubuque, Iowa. And her dive is a forward dive with a, a one and a half somersault in a pike position. Degree of difficulty, 1.7. And she hit that right on the button. There's a pretty close to a five and a half, six dive. She's a 16 year old 11th grader at uh, Wallard High School in Dubuque. This is Kathy Carport, Plainville wide in Connecticut. She's a student at the Lastonbury High School, 17 year old, 11th grader. And she's doing a forward uh, dive with a uh, full somersault with a full twist in a free position, degree of difficulty 2.0. Ooh, that's pretty close. Only thing is she twisted just a little too early. I think about five. I might add while we're going through this that uh, we missed Carrie Irie. She was in first place going into this last round. And uh, also Peggy Anderson uh, was in second. And this next diver, O'Keefe, is in third. So this girl must hit it to get pretty close to first. Her name is Jane O'Keefe from New Canaan, Wyoming. 15 year old, 10th grader at New Canaan High. And she's doing a forward uh, dive with, with a somersault with a double twist in a free position, degree of difficulty 2.2. Two. And she just missed it. You saw, probably saw her feet go in first, Paul. Mm -hmm. And then she turned four, her body. So this deducted four, from her. Four, and it probably five, hurt her chances three, of uh, overgaining the first place. It's hard to tell at this point what the other divers will do, but uh, it hurt a little bit by not getting all the way around. Diving can be a matter of fractions, can it? Oh, just fractions. And this is the fraction we mentioned earlier that they have to work on. This is Adrian Lusk of Rochester, Michigan, Y, 16-year-old, 11th grader. And she's doing a forward dive, one and one half uh, somersault with a full twist. Watch this twist at the end. She made it. She made it. That was a beautiful dive in there. I think she came around, though, and they're going to have to deduct something on it. Three and one half, four, three, four. The next diver is Wendy Jackson, Flushing, New York wide, uh, Cold Spring Harbor, eighth grader, she's 14. And she's doing a forward dive with one and one half somersault with a full twist in a free position, degree of difficulty 2.2. Watch it at the end, this is very important. And see, that, just that little bit, if they've been at the hips and gone in straight worth a full point, and it deducts when they don't. Three, two, three. Miss Barbara Harding. Barbara Harding is next from New Canaan Wine. 16 year old, 11th grader, New Canaan High School. And she's doing a inward dive with a half twist, a layout position, and that's inward, just missing the board. See how close she comes to the board. The fact is she hit the board with her hand and that'll deduct from her score, but it was awfully close. Four and one half, four and one half, five, four and one half, five. Obviously it isn't to hurt, her hand might sting a little bit. It'll sting a little bit, a little bit more pride by hitting it, I'm <laughs> sure. One and one half twist, three position, two point one. This is Tina Steck from the Summit, New Jersey wide, uh, Lafayette Middle School, eighth grader. Another eighth grade, and she's doing a back somersault with one and one half twist in a free position. This is very difficult. And again, <laughs> Paul, that's right. It's just at that last half in, uh, that she's missing. 
and uh, had they go straight in and, and complete their dive before their feet hit the water, uh, they get their points. It's when they hit the water and uh, still finishing their dive that it's a deficient dive. This is Billy Ann Adams from the York PA Wyatt Red Line High School, 15-year-old, 10th grader. And she's doing a back one and one half somersault in a tuck position, degree of difficulty 2.2. And a good dive here could really put her up in the, uh, the top six, I think. Wow. Boy, that was close to the board. That's mm. about a three and a half dive, I'm afraid. What does three the coach, uh, what does the coach say when you? Well, four, their heart, four, <laughs> fall or heart comes right up to their throat. Uh, <laughs> we have seen accidents, diving action. It's a, it's a hazardous for the kids, but once they learn how, it's not, it's just like any other sport. You know, there's a, uh, a point where there's a little bit of danger, but when they cut them close to get the points and they're in keen competition, they try this. And uh, believe me, they, the girls know when they're close. They look out for it. Divers, all those divers who participated in the last event should be in the awards area. Well, we finally got the uh, awards in, and we'd like to probably start with the third place and start from the bottom. And uh, Jane O'Keefe from New Cannon uh, is in third place. Second place is Peggy Anderson from Dubuque, Iowa. And in first place is Carrie Irish. Carrie Irish, and she's from New Cannon YMCA. And we have an unofficial record at this time of 388.25, and the old record was 355.65. That's unofficial. Uh, we'll report it if it's an official record shortly. Well, that, that last diving record was a national record by Kerry Irish from New Cannon YMCA. It was 388.25 points. New national record. Okay, and into the 400-yard medley relay finals, championship finals. In lane one, it'll be Battle Creek, Michigan. In lane two, Plainville, Connecticut. Norwalk, Connecticut in lane three. In lane four, Indianapolis, Indiana, Jordan wide. Montclair, New Jersey in five. Ann Arbor, Michigan in lane six for the 400-yard medley relay finals. This should be close, Paul. Last year's Montclair, New Jersey uh, relay team set the record. They're seated third this time. Keep an eye on them, they're in lane five. However, the top seed is Norwalk, Connecticut in lane three. Keep an eye on them, Paul. They, uh, they're the national champions in lane five. It'll be four lengths for each stroke. Is that the idea? Four lengths for each stroke. One, 100 yards. The first one's doing 100 yard back, 100 yard breast. The second swimmer, the third swimmer, 100 yard fly, and finishing up with 100 yard free. to me how the swimmer can see that turn coming up. Sometimes their vision is very poor to, to make the turn. How do they, do they sense it? Or? Oh, well, there's two uh, techniques. That backstroke flag you see draped across the pool is about five yards out. And they see that over their head, they know they have three or four strokes left before going in. And then the other way is they'll count their strokes going down. They know when they hit 20, they got one or two strokes left and then they'll look. Is that the prime purpose of those flags? Yes, it is. It's an indicator for the backstroke. It's the only reason why it's there is for the backstroke. The breaststroker is probably the most penalized stroke in swimming. They got to keep their head in a plane of the water. They got to keep their arms symmetrical. They have to do a what we call a frog kick. It's really something. Some might wonder why we're not going in and getting a close-up shot of the individual swimmers as they get set to dive off, opening the individual races. But the flags are just at the level of which we try to get those close-ups, Bill, and uh, they're mandatory, and we uh, can't replace them. That's right, and uh, it's, it's really an indication for the backstroker that they're coming to an end. 
Take a look at the breaststroke. They're almost all in line now. Beautiful. Those four in the middle. Remember, in lane five is Montclair, the defending champion. And that's the lane uh, nearest to the uh, screen. The one that's out in front going in uh, second on the turn. Remember again that the uh, national record is 416.16. And I think they got a real shot at it the way they're going now. They're gonna have to touch around uh, 250 and I think they're pretty close to it now. Yeah, she's making a turn at 248. Well, Paul, the defending champions out in front. I don't think they're gonna get him, Paul. The defending champions are out in front. Got a good lead now. Yes, she does. Good turn. Good flip. They have to start tucking in about three feet out, or uh, excuse me, five feet out going in. The others are a straight line across. And I don't see anybody. Uh, taking Montclair, but it's a real race for second place, Paul. Look at him. Remember the record, 416.16. He got a shot at it. No, it's not gonna be a record, but their defending champions are back again. It's Montclair, New Jersey in lane five, coming in number one in the 400-yard medley relay finals. Paul Brown, along with Buster Crabb, and continued coverage of the National YMCA Swimming and Diving Championships from Edinburgh State College. We gave you the winner, Montclair, New Jersey, first place in the 400 medley relay with the 417-403. Let's fill you in on the individual team members. Robin Schulte from Montclair, New Jersey, Montclair High School. Debbie Rents, Columbia High School, 16-year-old 12th grader. Beth Schnurr, Memorial High School, 16-year-old 10th grader. And Diane Soton, Bloomfield High School, grade 10, she's 16. In second place was Battle Creek, Michigan, with a 422-147. And in third, Plainville, Connecticut, with a 422-336. And now, to interview a gal who broke one of the records, Diane Jaglowski, let's turn it now to Buster Crabb. I have here an award from the Young Men's Christian Association Aquatic Committee. It's a national award, and it's going, I'm going to present it to a really fantastic girl swimmer, a girl that uh, not too um, many minutes ago broke the uh, national YMCA record in the 500 yards freestyle. She swam five. If you know swimming at all, you'll know this is great time. 521.783. 500 yard freestyle, a new national record, and her name is Diane Jalowski, and she swims for the Montclair YWY, correction, YMCA. J uh, Diane, congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I'd like to ask you a, a couple of questions, okay with you? You tell me, how many hours do you swim every day? Well, about three hours, six days a week. Three hours, six days a week, and uh, all of it freestyle? Um, yes, just about all free. You don't, uh, well, what about, uh, you kick, don't you? Don't you uh, use a kickboard once in a while? Yeah, I kick, pull, do some IM. Uh -huh. How about, uh, how about the hand paddles? Yeah, I use, they have swim mitts. What do you, uh, swim aids? Is that swim what you, yeah. swim mitts? Yeah. Uh, is, are they uh, fiberglass? Yes, we have a pair of fiberglass and then plastic ones, that's the mm -hmm. bond. How long, how long have you been swimming? This is my eighth year. You like it? 
You come from a, from a family of swimmers? No, I'm the only one that swims in my family. You no brothers or sisters? I have a brother. Uh-huh. Uh, what started you on swimming? You think it's good exercise? Uh, you just took to it or what? I think it's good exercise. I always swam when I was little, no. So just stuck with it. Uh -huh. I think, uh, as a matter of fact, Diane, I think it's the best exercise that anybody can take. Uh, it's something that, uh, of course, you're going to enjoy all of your life, you know. Uh, you're never going to regret giving up any of the time that you've spent in the pool these last eight years. Uh, are you going to try out, this being an Olympic year, are you going to try out for the Olympics this year? Yes, I'm hoping to go. Uh, 400 meters? 400 meters and 200 meters. Two, uh, 200 and 400 meters, yeah. And then you'll have, a, uh, going for the 200, of course, you'll have a chance for the, uh, if you make the team, and I hope you do, uh, you'll have a chance for the, uh, for the relay team, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about, tell me something about your diet. I'm, uh, I've always been one kind of conscious of my diet, what I eat. Uh, my weight's about the same as when I was swimming a long time before your dad was born. Uh, but my weights, uh, I've kept about the same by, by swimming and, and vitamin pills and uh, diet conscious and whatnot. Uh, do you have to watch, do you have a weight, uh, weight problem? Do you have to watch your weight? Um, not really. Plain foods a lot? Yeah, mostly proteins, vitamins. Uh -huh. Protein burned up first like uh, kerosene on a fire. They burn up first, right? Right. What else do you know about swimming? Yes, I know. <laughs> do you swim on the clock a lot? Yes, a lot of pace work. A lot of pace work. For example, in this 500, how did you train for this? Did you swim a lot of 500s every day, or did you swim uh, every second day, uh, swim 80% uh, speed or something in the 500? How did you, how'd you work out? I'd start by doing um, a couple 500s and be broken down to 250s. You warm up? Do you warm up first? Yeah, warm up the regular workout. And then you swim a couple of 500 yards, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then uh, what about uh, sprint work in conjunction with uh, a middle distance race like 500 or, or 1,000 yards? Do like um, five 100s and 1050s and repeats. Five 100s, five, that's 500, and 10, uh, 1050 is another 500. How many yards a day do you think you swim? Okay. Do you know, I should say, do you, uh, uh, do you swim? I average about 8,500 yards. And that's very good. Nice workout. You're going to um, swim a little longer than that, though, uh, when you get ready, right? Yes, uh, plan to. Well, I sure uh, wish for you the best of everything, Diane. You did. You're a great swimmer. I like the uh, your style. I like the way you uh, you work. In the one. I sure like your flip turn. I can't flip turn uh, at all. And uh, good luck to you. Well, thank you very much. You bet. Thank the 400-yard individual medley follows now the championship final, swimming in lane number one, Martha Long, a Decatur DeKalb wife, Atlanta, Georgia, a 15-year-old Henderson High School 10th grader. Ann Conley of the Meadville, Pennsylvania Y in lane two. She's a junior high school student, Meadville Junior High, 14-year-old 9th grader. And Mary Ellen Scullins of Glen Cove Y, Glen Cove, New York in lane three. She's West Hempstead, Long Island High School, 16-year-old 11th grader. Cheryl Price is in lane four. She from Jordan Y, Indianapolis, Indiana. And Diane Soden, Montclair Y, Montclair, New Jersey, in lane five. And in six, Joanne Bisbo of the Midwest Y of Hempstead, New York, St. Ladislaus School, a 13 year old seventh grader. And they're off. Yes, uh, the race is supposed to be between Mary Ellen Scotland in uh, swimming in lane number three and Cheryl Price from Jordan YMCA swimming in lane number four, according to qualifying times. Right now, the, uh, the leader at the, in the butterfly is lane number five, and that's Diane Sodden. This, uh, this uh, butterfly stroke, uh, Paul, as you know, is one of the most, if not the most difficult of all of the strokes to swim. And uh, uh, in, a, in a race of, uh, of this type of 400 uh, yard, where they swim 100 yards in each one of the strokes, this can really pull it, if they're not in condition, the kids, uh, really pulls it out of a swimmer, the butterfly. You think it's the most uh, physically demanding? I think so. Without, well, without doubt, I would say. Number four lane, Cheryl is uh, a little in front. Number uh, three lane, Mary Ellen running um, in third place. In lane number five, uh, Diane Sodden running in second place on the first leg of the uh, backstroke. 
as of now 128 127 they hit they're a little a uh, little bit ahead of the record whether or not they'll be able to hold this uh, I don't know it's still a little early in the race lane number four swims real well Cheryl from um, Jordan YMCA Indianapolis just a few seconds ago the viewers saw the two leaders on their screens uh-huh she's well out in front of the backstroke there however is in, in this uh, in this race there is a day of reckoning in each one of the strokes she's probably um, one of her strong stroke it could well be that her uh, Cheryl's strong stroke is the is the backstroke we'll see when she turns over and does the breaststroke for the next hundred yards at the completion of this backstroke leg. Just to give the viewers some perspective now to identify where which lane is, you want to look at the top of your picture for lane number one and that's, coming downward. That's Martha Long and uh, Conley is in lane number two. Number three, Mary Ellen Scarling, Glenn Clove YMCA. Number four, of course, is still in front, Cheryl Price from Jordan. Number five is Diane Sodden, Montclair Y, and Joanne Bispo. Mid Nassau YMCA is in lane number six. Yes, I would say that the breaststroke for um, for Cheryl is not her better stroke because the uh, lane number two and uh, Connolly in lane number three, uh, Mary Ellen, are, are creeping up as well as lane number five, which is uh, Diane Sodden. They tell me that three and four are really going to have a battle when they roll over onto the, the freestyle, Mary Ellen and Cheryl. Ann Conley swimming very well at this time, lane number two, and lane number five, Diane is swimming well. Lane number six uh, is a little, uh, looks like she's a little out of it. All right, this is the last hundred now. They go into the freestyle. Here we go. Two, three, and four. And uh, Mary Ellen and Cheryl looks like they will. Well, look at number five come. Number five is Diane. She's not finished yet. No, I don't think they're going to catch the number three lane. And that's Mary Ellen Scarling. She had the fastest qualifying time, 503.121. They're not going to catch her. Not a chance in the world. Lane number two, uh, Ann Conley, is going to, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. This Lane number five, Diane Sodden, is, uh, is really coming fast for second place going to be very close between lane two and lane number five for second place. Lane number two second, lane number five, that's uh, Diana's third. Lane She's number third. four is, uh, lane number four is fourth. Okay, so the way it wrapped up, coming in first was Mary Ellen Scollins, Glen Cove Y, Glen Cove, New York, in second place, and Conley from the Meadville, Pennsylvania Y, and third, Diane Soden of Montclair Y, Montclair, New Jersey. Getting set now for the 200-yard freestyle championship finals. And a little later, we'll bring you up to date on how the teams stand right now. In lane one, we have Ann Black from Decatur DeKalb, Decatur, Georgia, Columbia High School student, grade eight, 14 years of age. Janice Anderson in two from Montclair, New Jersey. Three, we have Diane Jaglowski, Montclair Y. She, the gal who broke the previous record. Sherry Bush, South Beverly Y, Melbourne, Florida. Marie, uh, Mara Costin of the Lynn Y, Lynn, Massachusetts in five, and in six, we have Marilyn Flugcaper from Watertown Y, Watertown, New York. I had a nice chat with um, Diane just before the start of this race. She qualified uh, faster. She's swimming in uh, lane number two, uh, lane number three, correction. And uh, she won the uh, 
500 last night, uh, Paul. One to 500 and broke the record by a second swim. Uh, she swam at 521 in the fraction, which is fantastic time for a girl. She's out in front now, lane number three. And lane number two, Janice Anderson, is running in second place. Lane number two, Janice Anderson from Montclair, YMCA. They always turn out a good Y team in, in Montclair. Very good race. Lane number, um, lane number four, Sherry Bush was second last night in the uh, 500 and broke her record. She won the 500 last year and set a new record. She ran second to uh, Diane last night in the 500. She's running in third place now in this 200 freestyle for, for gals. And that's the way I'd pick them. I'd pick them three, two, and, uh, and uh, lane number four. Sherry Bush in lane number four. Diane's out in front. Very good time. Diane won it. Lane number two was second. Janice Anderson. And lane number uh, four was third. Uh, Sherry Bush from uh, South Bareford Y, Melbourne, Florida. Diane Jaglowski, first, second, Janice Anderson, Montclair Y, Montclair, New Jersey. In third place, Sherry Bush, South Bareford Y, Melbourne, Florida. We prepare now for the 200-yard Butterfly Championship Final. Before getting to that, very briefly, we'd like to thank Bill Daisley, the physical director of the Erie Y. And, of course, the Erie Y is the host YMCA for these nationals. Bill, of course, was the coordinator also for these events here at Edinburgh State College. Preparing then for the 200-yard Butterfly Championship Final, we have in lane one, Kim Hill, of Decatur DeKalb, Y, Decatur, Georgia. She's a Shamrock High School, 17-year-old 12th grader. Lebris Smith of the Norwalk, Connecticut, Y, a Wilton High School, 18-year-old 12th grader in lane two. In lane three, Marianne Bergen of the Flushing, New York, Y, a 17-year-old 12th grader, Manhasset High School. In four, Sharon Bauer, Delaware Y, Buffalo, New York, Kenmore High School, 14-year-old ninth grader. That's a junior high school at Kenmore. In five, Kathy McCarthy, Delaware, Buffalo, New York Y, a Bennett High School student, 16 years of age, and uh, she's an 11th grader. And finally, rounding out, in six, we have Ann Conley, the Meadville, Pennsylvania Y, the 14-year-old ninth grader. She's a junior high school student at Meadville. 200 yard butterfly. Now this uh, Connolly girl in lane six buster just swam the uh, 400 individual medley a while ago, so is yes. she bound to be a little tired? Oh yeah, she's uh, definitely, uh, Paul, she'll definitely be tired. And uh, she's showing it already. This is a tough race, this is 200 yards that these gals have to swim, and it's a long way swimming the butterfly. Uh, Sharon Bauer looks real good to me. I did it the mark. She didn't qualify quite the fastest, but uh, the uh, three center lane is a three, four, and five lane. Uh, Qualifying-wise, time-wise, are very close. Uh, you can disregard the first couple of lengths, I think. But I look for uh, Sharon Bauer to be uh, right up there. She swims for the Delaware. YMCA in Buffalo, New York. And lane number three is Marianne Bergen. She comes from Flushing Wines. Uh, Flushing Wine, not too far from where I live. I live in Rye, as you know, Paul. And Flushing always has a good swim team. A reminder to our viewers that the clock that is super in our picture is unofficial. She got three more lengths to go. They've all got three more lengths to go. And uh, Sharon Bauer from. Uh, 
Delaware wide, looks like uh, she's pretty well got this wrapped up. It's going to be a scrap for second place, I think, between Marianne Bergen of Flesh and Kathy McCarthy of Delaware. Around here. No. Lane number two. Bruce Smith, Norwalk, YMCA, swimming well the last length. Well the last length may come in at third place. She didn't quite do it. Very close. So in the 200-yard butterfly, coming in in first place was Sharon Bauer of the Delaware Buffalo, New York Y. In second place, Marion Birkin of the Flushing, New York Y. And in third place, it was Kathy McCarthy of the Delaware Y Buffalo, New York in the championship finals for the 200-yard butterfly. The 100-yard backstroke championship final is next in the docket with Debbie Hughes of Kalamazoo, Michigan Y in lane one. Uh, Portis Northern High School 16-year-old 11th grader, Melissa Ward, Jordan Y, Indianapolis, Indiana. North Central High School 16-year-old 11th grader in lane two. Mary Rich. B.R. Ryle Y of Glen Ellen, New York, in lane three. She's 12 years old in seventh grade at Franklin Junior High. Ellen Wallace, McCutcheon Edison Y, McCutcheon, New Jersey, in four. A St. Mary's High School 14-year-old ninth grader. Jackie Johnson, Huntington Y, Huntington, New York, in lane five. 14-year-old ninth grader from Coas Junior High School. And Nancy Natardi of Oswego Y, Oswego, New York, a campus school. She's in grade eight and she's 14. She's in lane six for the 100-yard backstroke. Use the new start, Nancy, Nancy Natardi, as Wigger wives here at Oswego, New York, uh, did the standing stop for the backstroke, which is something uh, uh, comparatively new in backstroke swimming. And according to the form shot, Mary Rich, Abby Rial, YMCA in Glen Ellen, Illinois, is uh, swimming very easily in lane number three. And Ellen Wallace, Matuchin, Edison, YMCA in lane number four. And that apparently is the race, lane three and four. Mary Rich and Ellen Wallace. Ellen Wallace, Matuchin Edison YMCA, a little in the head. Leading a really good race. Great race. Pretty close, pretty close. Yeah, between four, lane four and three. Ellen Wallace, if, um, looks like she won it by a touch, Mary Riss. Uh, in second place. That's the way I'd pick him for right now, Paul. In third place, I didn't catch that. Uh, I didn't either. I was close. Uh, really tied up with that race. It looks like, uh, see, it looks like lane number two may be third, but we'll see. Okay, here, here comes come the, the official results. Very good. It was lane three, coming in number one, and that, of course, was Ellen Wallace of Metuchen Edison Y, Metuchen, New Jersey. Lane four was second, and that is... Uh, well, let me check it out. Check it out. I had it all wrong, Buster. Lane uh, three came in first. Lane three came in first. Yeah, that's catch according to that. Yep. Mary Rich of the B.R. Ryle. Sure number four, Lane had one. B.R. Ryle Y. Mary Rich of uh, Glen Ellen, New York. She Look how close the times are, Paul. Nine right. six four nine nine two. In second place uh, was Lane number four. That was Ellen Wallace of Metuchen, New Jersey. And in third place was. Lane two, Melissa Ward, Jordan Y, Indianapolis, Indiana. 